the first time he escaped, he was with another prisoner. And they got to a river, and the other prisoner who escaped with him couldn't swim. So they went back to the camp. He was sometimes put to work in fields. And there was a little German girl who was about 12 years old, and she used to smuggle food out to the prisoners sometimes. When he came back to Moore, he, well, they had no money, so they were very, yes, they were hungry. And I think um, if it hadn't been for my, my grandmother, she was very helpful because I think she would give them literally crusts of bread sometimes with butter on and, um, and just about kept them going. He'd been a regular soldier. He wasn't just a wartime soldier. He'd, he'd joined the army as a boy. At the end of the yard also, there was a gate and that led through to the garden. But there was no grass. It was a garden for growing vegetables, blackberry bushes, or red currant bushes, um, probably potatoes, raspberry canes, that sort of thing. Beno? Do you see a will? Yes, I've been to the pub. No. I'm not drunk. And no. I haven't seen anyone. Bet you not speak for Will. Larry came. Feels like the last of the coal. We can manage, Jack. Like we're coming. Don't think it's a bill. Here. Christ, you never bloody stop, do you? Just sit there wrapped in that bloody blanket. I used to sleep on this, under the stars. I know, Jack. They used to pull them over their heads. Food tasted a cordite, but at least we had it. Death hung round with the mud in our clothes. But at least if you kept your gun clean, you were worth the brass in your pocket. And you know something? When you could see them, the stars actually looked more beautiful. Brighter. Sharper somehow. Glittering up there like... Like so many pieces of shrapnel. Christ, I wish it was there now. I'm stifled here. <laughs> You're suffocating. Look at you. You even look like the enemy. I'm not the enemy, Jack. I just want... Open it. Might be something. You open it. It's not private anymore.
Jack. Look. You never told me. What good's this? We're practically starving. But Jack is recognition. You'll be famous. People will remember you forever. I, I'll remember. Remember. What's a memory worth? What's a memory worth now? Sixteenth of August, nineteen seventeen, his gun team became a casualty. Private Bond took charge of the team and succeeded in getting his gun up close behind the infantry and bringing it into action. And throughout has shown a splendid example of courage and determination. This is the actual letter from the regiment, which he tore up and threw on the fire. My mother rescued it. She pieced it back together with sellotape. She said they gave us medals, but when we got back, they threw us out and didn't care if we starved. So he was very bitter about that. My grandmother also lived at number 45, and I spent a lot of time with her because he had tuberculosis and wouldn't let me be with him very much in case I caught it. And I remember that he would sometimes come to the front window upstairs and I would have to stand across the road on the pavement so that he could see me and wave to me. This is my dad, one of the very few photographs that I have of him. I think I'd been taken up into Exeter one day by relatives, maybe, and on the way back to our house, or to my grandmother's house, we passed a horse-drawn carriage, and he was in it, and he waved to me. He was on his way back to um, back to hospital. I suppose then it was called an asylum for people with tuberculosis. And I think that's the last time I saw him. My mother had brown eyes, and his were a greeny, greeny, grayish, bluish color. And I think mine were like like his. Yes. <laughs>